The random slayings outside the suburban hotel sent shockwaves through police headquarters. They desperately needed a gang member to talk. And inside DK's gang, paranoia was taking over. With a double murder on their hands, one loose word could see them all locked up. Danny always stressed to us that no matter what, you don't talk to cops. And if they come to your house, you kick them out. He always said that to us. And then he'd turn around and say, a detective came and visited me this morning in my house. And he came inside and I made him a coffee and we had an interesting talk. And he brought up the double murder. And I told him I don't know nothing about that. After Danny told us this, Michael said, I reckon Danny's rolled over. So Michael started becoming paranoid that Danny maybe did pass on information to the police on who the shooter was. This made Michael Kanan basically want to shoot the prick. So Michael and the boys decided to do the unthinkable. Get rid of the boss. They arranged for Danny to meet them at one of their safe houses to collect some guns. Shit, it's Danny. What? Shit. But he was early. Michael and a few of the senior members all jumped up, grabbed their handguns, put it down their waist, and ran out the door. I'm gonna buzz them in. Not yet, not yet, not just hurry! Try to turn it Put the guns away, put the guns away. I'm buzzing him in. Hey, Danny. Yeah, mate, just, oh, just come up, just go out of bed. A few seconds later, Danny Karam's come into the apartment. He asked me where the other members were. Where is everyone? Danny had the guns taken down to his car. Michael Canan and the others were waiting downstairs. Danny was about to be assassinated by his own family. shots were pumped into his body and he was just shot dead in his vehicle. I thought it was a stupid move on behalf of our group. I knew that the uh, amount of heat we already had on us has now just been doubled. At the same time, I sort of felt like a bit of justice was done as well because he wasn't a nice guy anyway. His days were numbered. With the hotel murders and now Danny's, the last thing the gang needed was publicity. So when they saw a TV promo featuring them in a news show for that night, they panicked. There was discussions with myself and senior members of the group that this is not a good thing to be aired in the suburbs that were known. One of the senior members said we can cause a blackout by shooting this substation. We pulled up right next to this power station and they opened fire. After the shooting, we went back to a safe house, turned on the TV, and the fucking show was still on. First tonight, frustrated police say it's time to stop the madness of Sydney's escalating gun crime. After Danny's devious murder, an extremely jittery gang decided to create a decoy. Another murder was planned. 
people expected some type of retribution. So we thought, hey, why not Tong and Sam, we'll go and shoot him. People think, well, maybe Tong and Sam was involved in Danny's shooting and he copped it. So on this particular note, we were armed up. We we're driving towards King's Cross, looking for Tong and Sam. We we're driving down the back streets of Paddington and a marked police car was driving the opposite direction. At that point, they'd done a U-turn and proceeded to follow us. A U-turn that would spin them out of control. Come on! The vehicle drove down into a cul-de-sac behind the White City tennis complex. Before jumped out of the car. I put out my 45 and threw it over the fence. And then proceeded to climb this fence. So did Michael Kanan and another senior member was a bit overweight and was finding it difficult to climb the fence. I made a decision to abandon the gun and take off. As I was running up the road, I heard a number of shots. When I heard the gunshots, the first thought in my head was, fucking Mick has to fucking shoot, you know? He couldn't just fucking run or throw the gun away. He's got to open fire, which is just typical of him. I mean, you can't take on the New South Wales police. You just don't do that. Everybody knows that. The whole idea is to be under the radar. And all Michael did was create so much heat for our group that no matter where we went, there was always police following us. There was always heat on our group under arrest and shot at least twice after a gun battle with police. Detectives investigating a number of murders, including the assassination of a Sydney drug dealer and the murder of two footballers outside a suburban pub, also want to interview the injured men. Michael Canan's wounds put him in a wheelchair, but despite shooting a police officer, a magistrate allowed Canan out on bail. A decision that stunned both the police and the public. Next on Gangs of Oz, the police breakthrough that finally put DK's boys behind bars. And the brazen attack on an unsuspecting family confirms the gang wars are still raging. I'm glad that they're all buried.